Francisco de Assis Pereira was born in Sao Paulo on November 29, 1967. He was indecently abused as a child by a maternal aunt, which resulted in him developing an obsession with breasts. As an adult, he was seduced into gay relationships by his boss. In one such relationship with a goth man, the man came dangerously close to ripping off Pereira's penis, frightening him about the possibility of losing his reproductive organ. Even prior to the murders, Pereira demonstrated a darker side. Tina, a travesti with whom he shared a room for over a year, constantly reported that Francisco had punched her in the stomach and slapped her in the face, just as several of the surviving women had claimed. He felt pain during intercourse act as a result of the incident with the gothic man, and the impossibility of pleasure is suspected of being the catalyst for Pereira's murder spree. Prior to the murder investigation, Pereira had been summoned to testify before the DHPP to clarify his use of a check sheet in the name of Isadora Frankel for the purchase of a helmet. Having alleged that he used the check with Frankel's consent, she was not his girlfriend, but a randomly chosen victim, he was released shortly afterwards. Pereira was employed as a motoboy at the time of the murders at a company near the police station that investigated the crimes. At the time, the owner reported the employee's strange behavior days prior to the DHPP's visit, as well as the fact that he had left a note announcing his abrupt resignation and departure from the company. The day before, the murderer made a slip when he approached a girl in the midst of her daily psychosis feeding routine, which he mentioned being unable to accompany him at the time, fact had already occurred amidst massive investigations and mass media disclosures, his murders and a method of approaching the victims. This girl then notified the killer that she had been given a business card with the name of Jean, with the company's telephone number. This girl immediately contacted the DHPP, who contacted the phone with the motoboy's company she had previously investigated in response to the opposite side of the call. The owner then informed the owner of Pereira's departure, leaving only the newspaper with his spoken image and a farewell message. Pereira was extroverted and persuasive, leaving the victims to describe their current circumstances, which were typically fraught with conflict in their relationships, in order to use this information to conquest and convict the girls. He worked primarily in the metro, more frequently in the lines connecting to the Jabaquera station, where he approached his victims with the promise of participation in photo shoots for a large cosmetics company, usually focusing on women who appeared to be in apparent emotional distress, which the delinquent described as sad and head low, and who appeared to be receptive to strangers. He left only a newspaper and a note on the table when he vanished. He expressed regret for having to depart, apologizing for the hasty action. My journey here is complete. Pereira recruited his victims by posing as a modeling agency's talent scout. He frequently strangled his victims with shoelaces after indecently assaulting them. Throughout the commission of the crimes, Pereira worked as a motorcycle courier. Pereira was arrested in Itaqui, Rio Grande do Sul, on August 4, 1998, capping a 23-day manhunt after he was reported to police by fisherman Yo Carlos Villaverde, with whom he was staying. He also pointed out the location of Selma's bones, which the police had not yet discovered in the state park. After being apprehended by police, the authorities were most taken aback by how an unarmed man could convince the women to climb the rump of a motorcycle and venture into the thicket with a man they had just met. Today, the killer is a prison record holder for receiving letters, the convict even married an admirer, later separating due to reports of the ex-bride and strange behavior and personality. Pereira will be released in 2028 after serving the maximum 30 years of seclusion required by Brazilian law, and prominent psychiatrists predict that he will commit another offense as a result of his pseudo-psychopathic, irreversible state of mind. Elisangela Francisco da Silva was a 21-year-old Paraná native from a poor Londrina family who had been living in São Paulo since 1996 with her aunt Solange Barbosa. Due to financial constraints, she dropped out of school in the 7th grade. She was never seen again after being left at the El Dorado Mall in São Paulo's West Zone by a friend. Her nude corpse was discovered at the state park on July 28. The already decomposed body required considerable effort to identify, and she was discovered three days later. I was hoping it wasn't her, her aunt stated. Silva left home on the day of her disappearance, stating that she would return in two hours. Raquel Moda Rodriguez, 23, his greatest ambition was to earn money to help her family in Gravita, Rio Grande do Sul. On weekends, she frequented bars with three friends, never staying past 12 a.m. around 8 p.m. on January 9, she left the furniture store in the Pinheiros neighborhood where she worked as a saleswoman. She called her cousin Luja upon her arrival at the Jabaquera station, almost at home, to inform her that she had met a young man and accepted his offer to pose as a model for him in Diadema, Sao Paulo. Her cousin advised her not to go, stating that it was too risky to date a stranger. 
Rodriguez said that she would not accompany him, but she never returned home. On January 16, her body was discovered in the dense undergrowth of the state forest. Caros was a minor and the youngest of three sisters, with the intention of studying accounting or computer science. Her preparations, however, were cut short on July 3rd in the afternoon. She vanished in the area between her Cochia home and the central business district of Sao Paulo, where she planned to attend to the formalities surrounding her dismissal as a drugstore clerk. The following day, a man approached her sister, Sarah, claiming the girl had been kidnapped and demanding a ransom of 1,000 hiaish. He stated that he would return your call later that afternoon, but he never did. Caros's body was discovered in the state park the following day. She was naked and showed signs of indecent assaults. Additionally, bite marks were discovered on the shoulders, breasts, and legs. Quirozi was strangled shortly after informing her boyfriend that she would be unable to attend the 1998 FIFA World Cup with him but would be on her way to his residence. Mourinho had never revealed to her family, at the age of 24, that she wished to be a model. On April 17, the girl vanished after leaving the home of her grandmother Josefa, with whom she shared a room. On July 28, her corpse was found in a desolate section of the state park. The body could not have been identified without the clothing and jewelry discovered next to it. She had been indecently assaulted and then strangled to death. While incarcerated, the notorious murderer received several letters from admirers, including the following. I'm at a loss on how to divert your attention. However, I have an idea, first and foremost, I want to express my desire for you every night. It's excellent. I believe you are a fiery individual. You are a part of me, a part of my heart. I wanted your body and soul to love you when I returned home. I want you regardless. I adore you with all my heart. Never lose hope, believe in God, because we will meet someday. Because I am aware of your sick behavior, I want you to maintain your composure. For the time being, our kisses are as follows. However, I am desperate to kiss you. I believe you pine for her. I adore you, I adore you, etc. I desire you, body and soul. And pardon me for everything I'm going through. You are aware, Franciso, that I do not settle and that I cry. And I must be courageous. I want to convey to you that I'm dying of longing for you. Oh my God, how I wish you a good night's sleep every night. I sleep alone and desire your presence. However, I am aware that this is impossible. It is acceptable for me to visit you. And I'm not sure how I feel. What is yours? Francisco, do not allow sadness to consume you and suffocate the radiance of your gaze. If you believe in God, you will never be alone. Jesus adores you, your mother and father, as well as me. After everything that had occurred, I attempted suicide, however, another extremely interesting thing had to occur, I thought a lot and had hopes, I believe the world revolves and that when people least expect it, something good always occurs. Gilmar Rodriguez, a journalist and author, published the book Locos de Amor, Women Who Love Serial Killers and Indecent Criminals, Editorial Ideas of Bulk, in 2009, in which he attempted to explain why the maniac was desired by so many women. He was taken aback by the 1,000 letters of love the felon received a month after his 1998 arrest. He was ultimately sentenced to 268 years in jail. I was seized by an evil power, Pereira said. As well as I am a person who possesses both a positive and negative personality. Occasionally, I am incapable of dominating this dark side. I pray, I pray, but I am powerless to resist, and so I pursue women. I wish they would avoid accompanying me into the park, that they would flee. He claimed he was about to begin cannibalizing his victims after being apprehended. On December 18, 2000, during a riot at the Taubate House of Custody and Psychiatric Treatment, inmates attempted to assassinate Pereira, and four inmates were killed. Pereira was then transferred to another mental health facility. He had stated that he considers himself to be a normal person and that he believes he is still alive as a result of his faith. Additionally, Pereira claimed that the actions he took in the past were not the result of his own volition but of an evil thing, damn it. While imprisoned, he met his current wife Shasara through letters in which she attempted to resolve his legal issues. She is intelligent, comes from an excellent family, and has a degree in history and geography, he boasted. According to a 2004 IBOP survey conducted for the public prosecutor's office, this case is the most remembered by Brazilians, with a 76% recall rate, making it the most remembered police case between 2006 and 2007.